Hey guys, Kyle here. I've got this blue Game Boy Advance that doesn't seem to stay powered on very reliably. It seems like the power switch in it is either needing to be replaced or it's just really dirty. I know there are some other YouTubers who've already shown how to do this, but I've wanted to fix this GBA for quite a while now. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install a new power switch into a Game Boy Advance. I purchased this Game Boy for 500 yen, about $5 US, at Super Potato in Akihabara back in 2017 on a trip to Japan. Surprisingly, it ended up being a still working system, it just had a damaged LCD inside it. However, I always found the power switch a little bit finicky, and the system would power off or restart even if I barely brushed my hand across the switch. So today, let's swap out that power switch with a new one. Here's a bit more of an in-depth look at the problem with this GBA. As you can see, it does actually power on normally, at least most of the time. However, you begin to notice that the system starts acting strangely as I fiddle with the power switch. The screen flickers, and the system sometimes reboots completely, which I don't need to tell you is pretty detrimental when you're in the middle of a game. The system does this though when the power switch is in the on position. Yeah, there's something wrong with this Game Boy. Before we start, here's what you'll need for this repair a soldering iron with temperature control and a fairly small tip, I use the Hakko FX888D soldering station, a spool of 6040 tin lead rosin core solder, some rosin flux, I use paste flux, desoldering braid, two screwdrivers, one with a small Phillips head and another with a small tri-wing head, I'm using the set from my iFixit toolkit, a bottle of isopropyl alcohol, I'm using 91% IPA, a pair of ESD safe metal tweezers, and a handful of cotton swabs. Optionally, it would also be good to have a toothbrush on hand as well for cleanup. I promise this one will make a little more sense as we get further into the video. This is the power switch we'll be installing today. This switch is specific to the original Game Boy Advance and the SP models, and can be purchased on eBay or AliExpress for a few bucks. Let's take this thing apart now. First, obviously, Take out the batteries. Next, grab your screwdriver with the tri-wing bit and remove the seven screws on the back of the unit. They're located here, 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 and here. The seventh screw in the battery compartment is a Phillips head, so remember to switch your bit to remove it. With all screws removed, lift off the back of the shell and then pull out any loose pieces and set them off to the side. You'll notice this wire on my GBA. This is part of the backlight kit I installed in mine, so yours likely won't have this here. Here's the power switch itself. For moving it back and forth, I can tell that there's some grit inside it, meaning it's dirty. For some, using a cotton swab and some isopropyl alcohol, working it into the power switch to clean it and dislodge any dirt particles, is enough to get it working normally again. For most, however, like in my case, this won't be enough and we'll need to replace the power switch entirely anyways. Unfortunately, using a desoldering gun to suck up the solder around the switch won't work, as it's too bulky for this tight of a space. So unless you have a hot air soldering station, you'll need to use a traditional soldering iron to remove it, which is precisely what I'm going to show you how to do. To do this safely and without damaging anything with our soldering iron, we'll need to remove the main board from the front half of the shell and disconnect our LCD. So take your Phillips screwdriver and remove the three screws holding it all together as shown here. Once that's complete, slowly pull the board away from the front housing and carefully disconnect your LCD ribbon. For those of you with unmodded systems, the place to disconnect your LCD from is this socket right here. Be sure to do this before pulling the system board away from the front of the shell. 
Now at this point, we'll begin desoldering the power switch, but I want to mention a few quick tips for this process. First, you'll want to keep your iron's temperature around 400 to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. The finer the tip, the hotter it will have to be to fully melt the solder. Just don't make it too hot. Only allow your hot iron to make contact with the pad for no more than two seconds at a time. The longer you keep it there, the more risk you run of damaging your board. Don't use your soldering iron to put pressure on your workpiece. Doing so could ruin pads and contacts, causing them to rip off. And lastly, don't try to pry components off of your board, or you'll probably rip off the solder pads with them. Just remember to be patient and careful. Please also bear in mind that the intention of this tutorial is to fully remove and replace this switch. However, since this method isn't the cleanest, my old switch ends up getting destroyed in the process. It was already broken anyways though, so it wasn't a big deal for me. With that out of the way, begin by using your desoldering wick and your iron to remove solder from the contacts anchoring the power switch to the board. There are four pins on the back and a soldering point on either of the short edges of the body of the switch's housing. I recommend using some flux to make this process easier, since it will allow the solder to wet to the braid by removing oxidation from the surface of the braid. This area is very tight to fit into, so be careful not to touch anything else accidentally with your iron, especially in the area around the four pins on the back of the power switch. You may need to apply flux, and possibly even additional solder, more than once to make sure you get all of the remaining solder out of there. You also might need to push down on your workpiece, at least a little bit, to get the braid to cooperate and make contact with the flux and the solder you're trying to remove. Just take care not to roast the pads on the board or damage any other nearby components. This next part I decided to reshoot partially because I didn't show proper or safe technique the first time I filmed it. What you want to do is de-lid the switch so you can remove it more easily, eliminating the two solder joints on the sides to keep them from interfering with the rest of the removal process. Do this by inserting one side of your tweezers into the switch going under the metal piece on top so that it protrudes out the other side. Then simply melt the solder joint and slightly twist the metal lid to separate it and lift it upward. Now just do the same thing on the other side of the lid and pull it away from the switch. Now grab the body of the remaining base of the switch and alternate melting the remaining solder on the four joints on the back of it. As you're doing this, gently pull the piece away from the board and it should finally come away without too much effort. As you can see here from my microscope, the slider part of the old switch is broken. It should line up straight, be clean and shiny, and anchored in the plastic like this new one. The same thing goes for the other part of the switch, which the slider makes contact with. It's very dull and dirty, and looks pretty worn, unlike the inside of this new switch. These two issues together are why I'm replacing the old faulty power switch entirely. With the old switch now removed, let's clean up our workspace and prep it for getting a new one. Use some rubbing alcohol and a cotton swab to clean up the leftover flux from the board. You can also use a toothbrush to help with this process, the bristles are a bit more abrasive, but not rough enough to hurt anything. This also helps you get into a lot of tight spots. After the alcohol evaporates, take some time to remove old solder and apply new solder to the pads on the board. The power switch I ordered from AliExpress came in this little package cut off from a reel, so here you see me cutting it out. The action on the new switch feels much smoother than the old one, and there's not a bunch of dirt and debris inside it. To install the new switch, the easiest way I've found to do this with a soldering iron is to use a pair of tweezers to position it while you fuse it to the solder already on one of the bigger pads. Remember to touch your iron to the workpiece and the solder so that you don't end up with a cold joint. After the first solder joint is done, just go down the line and do the same for the rest of the joints. 
It's also a good idea to add some more solder to the tip of your iron as you make contact with each joint to make sure it has appropriate coverage. Just don't add too much. Once you're satisfied with your work, go ahead and clean your workspace with some alcohol again. Here's what your work should resemble, seen under a microscope. Make sure you've cleaned up all the gunk left behind by the flux. Also, check that you don't have any bridged contacts or cold solder joints. My work is certainly not perfect, but for the size of the workspace, I'm happy with it. Before you close things up for good, test out your system to make sure that it powers on properly. For this process, you don't necessarily need to put any screws back in yet, just do enough to make sure you can put some batteries in and flip the power switch. On mine, I can see that it works as intended, and as far as I can tell, there is no more power fluctuations when I jiggle the new power switch. Everything turns on and stays on, just as it should. If you've made it this far without incident, Close up the rest of the system now, putting back all the screws as you go. Don't forget to put back all of the various plastic pieces and buttons as well. And now, the moment of truth. The power switch seems solid now, and there's definitely no power fluctuation happening anymore. It looks like this repair is complete. There's been quite a gap in my videos for the past eight months now, and a lot has happened since then, so I just wanna say a heartfelt thank you to everyone who has tuned in to watch this video. I'm really glad that y'all like my content so much. I've got a lot planned, with more videos on the way, so keep an eye out for them. Please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel if you want to see more content like this in the future. As always, you all stay awesome, and I'll see you in my next video.